Uh, Senator Asa. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you to our panel. Just want to take a moment and echo the sentiments of so many of my colleagues expressing appreciation for the men and women of the United States Capitol Police uh, who endured a great deal on January 6th and showed great heroism. And also, uh, Madam Chair, if I might express an interest in working with you to ensure that they're well taken care of and their needs are met. This discussion of the conversation that the three of you had uh, regarding supplementary security support on January 6th raises the question of who's in charge. Is consensus between the two sergeants at arms and the chief of the U.S. Capitol Police required to make such a request? Mr. Sund. The request for the National Guard uh, needs to go to the Capitol Police Board for approval, yes. Who has ultimate responsibility for the security of the U.S. Capitol complex? Which individual? I believe that falls under the Capitol Police Board. The Capitol Police Board. So there is no individual who has personal responsibility for the security of the U.S. Capitol complex? That's the way I interpret it, yes. Had the U.S. Capitol Police conducted exercises simulating comparable events such as a violent riot on or within the U.S. Capitol complex? Uh, part, of our, part of our training for civil disobedience units uh, involves dealing with riotous groups. So we do do that training. We do do training on people attempting to gain entry into the, into the building. Uh, officers are trained on how to handle if someone tries to come through your door uh, unauthorized. Uh, but training for thousands of you know, armed insurrectionists, they were coordinated and well-equipped. Uh, no, we have not had that training before January 6th, but I'm sure we'll find a way to, uh, I'm sure they'll find a way to do it now. So if I understand correctly, Mr. Sund, you're saying that personnel had engaged in tactical training regarding techniques to repel attempts to breach the complex regarding rules of engagement. Um, but had any comprehensive exercises that included command, that included uh, procedures for coordination with supporting agencies, that included requests for support, that included communications with the Department of Defense or White House officials or guard units been conducted? Yes, we have. We, we do exercises that are very similar to what, what you're talking about before some of our national special security events. Uh, those are the NSSEs, such as the inauguration. We'll do uh, tabletop exercises that uh, go through the, the process of what you're talking about. Yes. Thank you. And, and had the Capitol Police held any such exercises um, not pertaining to specific national security special events? So in order to deal with emergent contingencies like a riot, uh, not associated with one of those moments specifically identified as requiring a whole of government security response. Yeah, one of the, one of the most important aspects of that that you're talking about that we um, we train our individuals to is what we call the incident command system. That's one of the one of the systems that we we feel really under the um, unprecedented pressure that they exhibited on January 6th begin to break down. The incident command system is established specifically so you have people that have an, uh, the clearest understanding of what's happening either in the field or inside the building in control of the resources uh, to, to utilize to defend against whatever issue you're having or respond to whatever incident you have. It's really an all hazards approach, but that is something that's trained. We have it as uh, part of our um, general orders. Uh, that is something that we'll need to look back on to see how it, it broke under this pressure. And, and I ask this question in part because of the account that's been shared regarding the coordination with the guard unit, um, which was here for COVID-related mission. And if, if I recall correctly, you related that you had a conversation with the commanding officer and discussed uh, mobilizing that unit if necessary, first via an intermediary stop at a Marine Corps facility to then come to the Capitol if necessary on January 6th. Were there not pre-existing channels of communication and procedures um, in the event you, not at a moment such as inauguration over State of the Union, but on any given day needed a quick reaction force to provide security support? Well, I think that when you refer to it, I think it's the established process where if you're going to request them in, in advance or request them uh, for uh, an incident, I think what we need to look at is those emergency requests. 
Uh, but there is a process for going through the Secretary of the Army, placing a, a, an official request. Ultimately, we did that. We, we had to do a letterhead after the fact. Uh, we did the oral request first uh, and set it up that way. But I think um, what I did by reaching out to General Walker was to get an idea, much like as I was rec requested to do, if we requested them on the 6th, what kind of resources could they give us and what type of time frame would we we'd be looking at? Uh, but I agree, there's already existing uh, process and channels for making the request for National Guard. Right, because you in fact anticipated there might be some need based upon intelligence that your department was seeing. Uh, but on any given day, if a foreign terrorist organization decided to mount an attack on this complex, do the procedures exist and are the channels in place such that a quick reaction force can be mustered swiftly? such that someone in your position knows exactly who to call and they can do so without consulting with the sergeants at arms? Uh, I think what you're seeing is uh, what we need to look at, because I'd still be required to consult with the sergeant at arms to make the request for National Guard. Okay. My time is running short, so I want to ask you this. What is the intelligence budget for the U.S. Capitol Police, and how many personnel do you have in the intelligence division, or did you have when you served as the chief? Uh, I'd have to go back and, and pull that specific information. Uh, we have a number of uh, intel analysts. We have a number of uh, people that work there, both sworn and civilian. But I want to give you a clear and accurate. Yeah, approximately how many personnel are in the intelligence division? I'd please? say approximately right around 30, 35 people. 30 or 35. And does the U.S. Capitol Police have the capacity to do any intelligence collection other than by making requests to executive branch agencies for raw intelligence or analysis? Uh, again, when you talk uh, about intelligence collection, we're a consumer of intelligence from the intelligence um, uh, uh, committee, or, or community, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have the ability to go and look at like open source, see what's, what people are talking about on open source, but going and collecting um, in-depth specific in, uh, intelligence uh, is something that we're a consumer of from the intelligence community. Thank you. Appreciate your time. I yield back, sir. Well, thank you very much. Uh, that was our last uh, set of questions.